In the last video, we learned about the least squares method for fitting a linear equation to data. We used calculus to derive the formulas for the least squares estimates, the slope and the intercept. In this video, we will look into the same problem from the perspective of linear algebra. We have the same n data points x1, y1 to xn, yn. We want to fit the equation of a straight line y equal to mx plus c to this data. For each of the data points, we can write a linear equation y1 equal to m into x1 plus c, y2 equal to m into x2 plus c and so on. So I have a system of linear equations with n equations. We can write this system of n equation using matrix and vectors. Usually we write those matrix and vectors using vector notations. So we have y equal to x times m, x, y, m all are in bold uppercase. That means they are all vectors or matrix. Capital Y is a column vector with all the y's, y1, y2, y3 and so on. Capital X is an n by 2 matrix. The first column has all the x's, x1, x2, x3 and so on. But the second column has only 1's. Capital M is also a vector and it has m and c. m and c are unknown. We have to estimate their values. But this is an overdetermined system. We have two unknowns but more than two equations. So we cannot have unique values for m and c that will satisfy all the n equations. Let's look at this problem from the perspective of geometry. Take the x matrix. Suppose this gray region is the column space of x. Let me draw two vectors v1 and v2 on this space. Suppose v1 is the first column of x and v2 is the second column of x. Any vector on this space, this column space of x can be obtained by a linear combination of v1 and v2. We have a system of equation y equal to x times m that does not have a unique solution. That means we cannot get the y vector by a linear combination of v1 and v2. In other words, y is not in the column space of x. The y vector points away from the column space of x, that gray region. But this does not help. Our task is to find a best fit linear equation for this data. That means we have to find a vector that is on the column space of x but also closest to the y vector. Now what is that vector? Luckily we know the answer. The closest vector of y on the column space of x is the projection of y on that space. I have shown that projection by the green arrow, that vector v. As v is on the column space of x, it must be a linear combination of v1 and v2, the columns of uh, column vectors of x. So we can write v equal to x into m hat. Now what, what is m hat? m hat is a vector with lowercase m hat and lowercase c hat. Just like lowercase m and small lowercase c in our original proposal for the linear fit. We don't know the values of lowercase m hat and lowercase c hat. We have to estimate those. To get m hat, we have to use few more tricks. Y is our original data vector. V is a vector that is closest to y as it is the projection of it and is also on the column space of x. So v is the best fit vector. Then what is the error in our best fit? That error must be equal to y minus v. I have shown that error vector using this red arrow. Now replace v by x into m hat. So I get error vector e equal to y minus x times m hat. V is the projection of y on the column space of x. So E, the error vector, is orthogonal to the column space of x. Now I can do some linear algebra. The error vector E is orthogonal to the column space of x. 
So the dot product between any vector on the column space of x and e must be equal to 0. In other words, I can write x transpose e equal to 0. Replace e by y minus x times m hat. So I get x transpose times y minus x times m hat is equal to 0. Now rearrange the terms. We get x transpose x times m hat is equal to x transpose y. We have to get m hat using this relationship. Calculate x transpose x first. So of the columns of x with rows to get the transpose. Multiply that with x. We get a 2 by 2 matrix. It is composed of sum of squares of xi, sum of xi and n. Now calculate x transpose y. Take the transpose of x matrix and multiply it with the vector y. We get another vector. It has summation of xi into yi and summation of yi. Great. We have calculated x transpose x and x transpose y. Get back to the original equation. Let's do some rearrangement of terms here. Get rid of our matrix representation and write these whole things in terms of linear equations. We get a system of two equations involving m hat and c hat. From the second equation, we get the lowercase c hat in terms of the lowercase m hat. c hat is equal to summation of yi minus m hat into summation of xi. The whole thing is divided by n. Summation of yi when divided by n gives the mean of y, y bar. Similarly, summation of xi divided by n is mean of x, x bar. So we get c hat equal to y bar minus m hat into x bar. Do you remember? We had the same equation for c in our earlier discussion on least squares method. Now replace c hat in the first equation and solve for m hat. I will skip the steps. You can easily do the algebraic rearrangement of terms. Eventually we get m hat equal to summation of xi yi minus y bar into summation of xi divided by summation of xi square minus x bar into summation of xi. This does not look familiar. But rearrange the term, you get m hat equal to summation of xi into yi minus y bar divided by summation of xi into xi minus x bar. That is the same of what we have got in our last video on linear regression. Now you can do some more rearrangement. I have skipped those steps and you get m hat equal to summation of xi minus x bar into yi minus y bar divided by summation of xi minus x bar whole square. This is the conventional equation for least square estimate for the slope of the base fit line. So what we have done? We have reached the same formulation for m and c for the base fit line. We have done earlier using calculus. Now we have got it through linear algebra. That's all for this video. Thank you for learning with me.